Hello and welcome to a new adventure. I'm currently stood on a bridge in Beeston and what we're going to do today is follow what was known as the Hunslet branch line or the Hunslet goods line. Now in the last video you saw me leave Tingley Viaduct just behind the camera there and head all the way down to Beeston station which is at the end of this line just behind me here. What we're going to do we've made our way a bit further back up the line back towards Beeston Junction which is where I am right now and I'm going to show you over the bridge in a second the junction and where it was and from here the Hunslet line or the Hunslet branch left here and made its way around the back of Middleton and all the way into Leeds through Hunslet. Now that the main purpose of the line was to connect it to the industrial area that was appearing at Hunslet in Leeds so I'm just going to show you over this bridge if you can just see over there, we've got a big fence blocking our view. But just down there is where the branch line left to the right and headed that way. So where that tarmac is that you can just see in front there is where the line branched off to the right. We've just made our way off the bridge and I'm down now at the exact site of Beeston Junction of where the Hunslet branch line left this main line here. Now it's still in use today as a lot of you will know it's the main obviously the leads to London uh, route now and you get the Azumas flying past. We might get one in a minute hopefully. So there would have been four tracks here and the right hand two would have curved off towards them trees there and headed to our right over there. So we made our way a bit further round from uh, where we were at the junction and as it curved to the right we've now made our way round towards the ring road in Beeston, the A653 if you know it and it crossed, there was a bridge there where the line crossed underneath. So what we've done we've just come back before the bridge a little bit and we're just looking for another bridge that used to be here but as you can see behind me it's all been filled in now so this entire cutting that was here is completely gone now, it's all filled in, landfill and everything the usual stuff that they pour in and the bridge up ahead I'll show you when we get there that still remains all the way again it's filled in I'm just going to pan you around and show you this so this is what's left of the cutting so it would have been somewhere around here and all these buildings on the left here didn't exist but there was a bridge somewhere around here that crossed to the main road over there but again it's beyond recognition you just can't see anything and I think that used to be a kind of a farmer's access, that bridge. And then you can just see the other bridge in front of us, which is the Beeston Ring Road there. So again, we would have been 10, 15, 20 feet below here in a straight line that way. So we're going to head up to that bridge and I'll show you what's left of that bridge up there. This is James, everybody. Hi, James. Hello. <laughs> He's a bit shy. He didn't want to be in the video, but I thought I'd show you anyway. He watches the channel and he wanted to come along so he's come along with us today. So we're currently stood on the A653 or the ring road and as you can see you've got the abutment of the bridge there and also on this side they appear to have removed the uh, steel bit in the middle that used to span the tracks and replaced it with a nice ornate fence as you can see on both sides but the stonework's still here which is a good thing. So we've reached the other side of the road and you can see they've got a nice little uh, plaque there it says a uh, Eastern Junction and uh, you can see again the cuttings filled in on this side and a nice little uh, bit of history there which is obviously what we're covering today so again it was the Hunslet Goods Railway Line it's got about three different names this line and it was 1899 to 1967 and like I say it was the Great Northern Railway and all the way to the other side of the River Air but as you can see Nothing left this side either, that's all been filled in. Now just behind me, it ran in a straight line right through here. And back in the day, this would have been all fields. But today it's a brand new, well I say brand new, it's a, a new housing estate. 
and all their back gardens have now extended onto the former track bed. So when they filled it in, all the houses have, no, have now doubled the size of their gardens onto the former the railway, which is uh, quite lucky for them to get a double-sized garden out of nowhere. But that's the way it headed anyway. So what we're going to do is make our way just a bit further down here. And I've seen something on Google Earth and it looks like what remains of an old footbridge that went over the railway. And it looks like it might be still there. So we're going to make our way a bit further down there and see if that remains. So we've made it down to South Lee Road, which is where I was talking about all the houses have extended their back gardens onto the former track bed. At this point, it would have been again in a cutting. So we made our way to a footpath, which is between these houses here. Now we're convinced that this was the original bridge that spanned the tracks here. So right where we are now, the tracks would have gone underneath us that way. So this would have been, obviously it's a tarmac now, but this would have been an original bridge here. Maybe a steel bridge of some sort. But let's have a look down here and see what remains. But as you can see, they've extended their gardens onto the track bed here now. And this would have been the edge here, this yard. And then down here, this is the original footpath that ran away from the line. So where these gardens are here is roughly where the cutting was and the track would have gone that way. Now we're gonna head a bit further down there on the same road because there was also an underpass here that went underneath the railway line further down. And I've, again, I've seen something on the maps that appears to indicate that that's still there. So as I was just saying about the gardens being extended, you can clearly see the garden fence here on the left where they've brought their garden to the end. And then you can see what remains of an old uh, concrete fence here. So this would have been the back of this building here at the side of the track bed. Okay, so we've reached the next spot on that same road. So we've just made our way a bit further down. We've got Middleton Park just behind us up there, them trees. Now, just to my right over here, it's now an industrial park. This used to be uh, the Beeston Colliery. And there was a branch line just a bit further down there coming off this one and heading up into the colliery. So the colliery would have been all around here. And this, where I'm stood now, on the maps, it looks like an underpass. Now, it does dip down in the middle here. So we've come down at the sides and it dips down. I don't know if it was a, like an underpass tunnel or whether it was actually a crossing, but I've got a feeling the line was probably 10, 15 feet above our heads here because on the map, it shows an actual embankment here. So the line must have been raised at this point because we did come down the hill down here and then headed off that way. And this would have been a little mini underpass under the line. So yeah, again, it's people's back gardens now, but this is the original footpath and it still remains to this day. So we're here again in Middleton Park. Uh, it's not been too long since I was down here last, but we're at the exact spot that I was in in the video. But it makes a bit more sense now because I'm following the line. So just behind that fence there was the underpass. And I was right, you can see that we're on a higher level here. This is the track level. So we are at a much higher level. The houses are a bit lower down. So that would have been the underpass, that path that we walked on. And it would have been on an embankment heading towards us here. And again, I'm going to show you these uh, fence posts. I did show you them in the Milton video, but we've got the concrete fence posts here, which would have marked the boundary of the tracks, obviously. But you can, if I can just show you over here, see the uh, concrete posts on this side as well, all the way down there. And right about where we stood now, just uh, find my feet, I just tripped over again. Right about where we are now, this exact spot here is where the branch line came off to go into the colliery. I've just, we've just been looking at the maps and trying to match it up and it's exactly here. So on the map it showed it as in line with the edge of this building here. So somewhere just around here, the line would have gone off that way. Only a short section of branch line headed up into the colliery up there. And then they would have brought the goods back down here and headed off that way towards Leeds. So we're just a bit further up from where we were a minute ago. And uh, again, you can see the track bed behind me there. And uh, we've just come from this direction. Now, when it gets up there, it would have hit the viaduct right at the end of here and spanned across a valley. There was actually two viaducts. It was in two sections. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you around here 
and then I'm going to make my way right round the other side towards the Middleton Railway and show you where that viaduct was that crossed the valley there and the Middleton Railway because I think it's better if we start up there rather than we walk through. So I'll just show you around here. You can see that we're in a cutting now, a slight cutting anyway. So you can see the retaining bank in there and the same on this side. Again, this would have been all industry or related to the mine back in the day. But all this ahead of us here was just a valley. It was just all fields and farmland. So we made our way a bit further round the other side of Middleton Park and we're now really close to the John Charles Centre for Sport which is just behind us up there. Now at this point it's all very confusing because if you look at the maps this landscape is totally different now and it's hard to comprehend where exactly we are. Now to my left we've got the Middleton Railway. Now this viaduct that I'm going to show you in a minute was actually split into two sections. So you had the span across the valley which is behind me then you had the second viaduct which crossed the Middleton Railway just over there. There was a little island in the middle, like a, an embankment, so there was two sections. Now I'm just going to show you a picture in a minute of this viaduct behind me here. Now like I say, it is actually a valley, so that's all it was spanning, there was nothing here, it was just fields, but a valley. It's not like there was a river here or anything like that. Now there's an industrial unit just over there. The corner of that car park is where the, the uh, embankment was, where the viaduct left and went across here and then there would have been another embankment in the middle and then the second viaduct across the railway which we'll look at in a minute but if you just take a look at this view now I'm going to try superimpose a picture in which is roughly and I can't be exact but it's roughly where I'm stood now it would have been taken from so we've just reached the site of where the Middleton railway is now it's just behind the camera so roughly here now is the same viaduct that I showed you a minute ago, but from a slightly different angle. So again, it would have been crossing roughly here. So I'm going to show you a picture now, roughly somewhere around here, and you can see the factory behind these trees. Well, you can't see it, but I can. You can see that factory actually in the picture through the viaduct. Okay, so let's move on a bit further. Here is the Middleton Railway, which is not running today, so... We're all right to uh, clamber around here, I'm sure. It's not running. There's there you go. That's an Azuma coming in soon. <laughs> yeah, there's an Azuma on its way through soon, he says. I wish. So it's on its way up there to Middleton Park. And then that way you obviously go down to Moor Road in Hunslet. So here's the Middleton Railway. About here, where them trees are at the bottom, would have been the second viaduct coming off this embankment here and crossing there. So again, I've made it into a field just at the side of the Middleton Railway and uh, I'm, I've been walking around for probably 10 minutes trying to match this picture up but it's so hard because there's so much uh, shrubbery and trees and different levels and things like that. The only thing I've got to go by is the original Middleton Railway which again, I'm not 100% convinced that that's the original alignment. I think it has been changed quite a few times. I, I was told it was anyway. So. I'm going to match it off the Middleton Railway, which is to my right over here. Now, as soon as the Hunslet branch line crossed the Middleton Railway here and it hit the embankment on the other side, there was also a bridge, a footbridge, that went over the uh, Hunslet branch line, which was known as the Cuckoo Steps, which was just up there in the distance. And also here, the Middleton Railway, back, and I'm talking back in the uh, late 1800s maybe, used to branch off here as well and curve up there to join the Hunslet branch line. So you were able to get a train from the Middleton up there, or a coal train anyway. So I'm going to show you a picture now and I'm guessing it's somewhere around here. But again, you can't see the Middleton Railway because of the trees, but it's right behind them trees. This picture shows what I was talking about. It shows the bridge crossing the Middleton Railway and you can just see in the background there the cuckoo steps up on the hill on the embankment. So I've brought you to some plain fields or some uh, little parkland now, just after the viaducts. Now where I am stood right now is the exact spot of where the cuckoo steps would have been, which was the uh, footbridge that crossed the Hunslet branch line up on the embankment. 
There's also a signal box just up here as well on the embankment. Now again, it's hard to tell because of the levels, but we would have probably been, well, the track would have been above us. So it probably would have been another 10 feet in the air above where we are now. Now I am told that all this site here was used for landfill in the 70s and 80s and it's all been re-landscaped. So what you're seeing now is completely different. But you've just got the uh, Middleton Railway just down there behind them trees. So the viaduct would have come here and hit the uh, embankment at this side. Then you'd have had the signal box and then you had the cuckoo steps right here where we are now, just above our heads. If you look in the distance there, and I'll zoom in for you, you can just see the M621 as it heads down into Leeds. Now the line obviously continued straight forward here. And when it hits where the M621 is now, you can see a bridge which crosses Old Run Road down there. That bridge would have been there, but it would have been obviously a railway bridge. It's now a motorway bridge. And the line would have hit the motorway or roughly where it is and then curved to the right and followed the actual, where the motorway runs today. So what you're seeing as the M621 was the original track bed from that bridge down there onwards and through as it wiggles its way through Leeds and then it would have, the line would have branched left and the motorway now carries on right. you enjoyed the video like I said join me for part two where we're going to continue from roughly the M621 site and we're going to look at where it crossed the Midland Railway and then right through Hunslet and across the famous swing bridge over the River Air and also the Hunslet Goodyard. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for free by clicking the logo here and click subscribe. Like the video and any comments you have down below. If you would like to support the channel or would like to make a donation, there are links in the description below. And finally, a big thank you to our existing supporters of the channel. See you on the next adventure.